I'm your host, Dean Austin D to the E, the A to the N. And on my show today, I have someone that's here to motivate, inspire, move, and uplift women. The one and only, the holistic beauty coach. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Guess who I have in the house today? I have the one and only, the holistic beauty coach is here and she's made it. We've had some little technical difficulties, but she's looking lovely. She's about to spread some love, some energy, and some and some some knowledge. Some knowledge. We hope so. You know, you know, it's I'm happy to have you here. Thank you for coming. Oh, thanks, Dean, for having me. No problem, no problem. Now, uh, I wanna we wanna dive right in. I, I the thing is, you know, we we spoke a lot about about uh women's health. Yes. A lot about women's health and the journey that women go through to be beautiful, to 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 make an impression on on the world. The world, yes. The world, not just other people, i.e., men, whatever you know, but the world. Yeah. Now your journey sounds like it's been it's been quite a journey, and that's why we're here today talking about this. And I'm happy to have you. So can you? Yeah. Explain a little bit about the journey. It's, I know it has to do with women's health, so you can, I'll let you take the floor. Yes. I mean, maybe we should say first, though, how we met, because... You know what? Let's do that. Okay. Let me, let me, you know, you know you're so smart. You're so sweet. Okay. So this is how we met. Yes. I, I'm an Advent bike rider, Avid bike rider. I, I shouldn't say Avid. Maybe I'm, I, I ride a lot, but yeah. not like those guys that ride Tour de France far out 30,000 miles. But I was riding on the bike trail and I saw this young lady and I said, I gave her a compliment. All I said was, you have a beautiful personality. I could just tell by the smile and by your personality, that you're beautiful. And I gave you a compliment and you said, you're beautiful too. Yes. No, you yelled in front of the whole right. world. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> I said, you're beautiful too. But I didn't hear that. I, didn't, I was riding it and I was like, hmm. So, so, so I turned around. Because yes. I said, just in case she thought I was a cuckoo bird, yes. I would go back and just let her know that the reason why I said it and that I, I felt like I, sh I need to spread the love. And yes. you responded. And that's how we met. And we connected and we started talking about women's health yeah. and, and life and love. And life and love and just that we need more of it in the world. And I right. said to you that day, I said, you know what? That made my day. And we need to make more people's day. And why yes. don't we compliment each other more out in public, even strangers. Like right, I love right. I agree. I totally agree. I totally agree. Yeah. And and you and I want to know has has your journey for as far as women's health and, and yeah. providing uh, knowledge to women about their bodies, has that been a, a lifelong uh, passion of yours or is it just something that just came out of your trials and tribulations? Yeah, well, you know, I grew up in a family that my mom has always been very healthy. She's an amazing cook. So I have really good, um, like just around food and good food and healthy food. Like we never had cereal or we never had, you know, wow. McDonald's or no anything. Captain Crunch, huh? No, we didn't get to. And I was so mad. I wanted it. Back I know. Captain Crunch is like crack. That's some that's some serious stuff. Your teeth hurt, yeah. your gums hurt, but you you got a serious high for like eight days as a kid running in circles. Right. Well, who doesn't like a great bowl of cereal? I mean, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> we didn't get to have any of that stuff. But so I had really good values around food. And then my mom, of course, was always chasing us with vitamins. You know, take your vitamins, which, of course, is annoying as you're a child. But I think that when you have those great values growing up, you tend to stick to it. Um, I veered off a little bit like most people do just, you know, when I graduated from college and started working and, you know, you're busy we're all busy. So what do a lot of people do who are busy and single and not having to cook for their families? They grab food on the go. Right. And so, you know, I had been doing that. I've always been really healthy. I'm really lucky. Like I rarely would have the common cold. So I did something okay. in my early 20s. I had a, a medical condition that necessitated possibly needing breast implants. I had tried to have a surgery that was unsuccessful um, because I didn't really want anything foreign. I'm just very natural, like, you know, right. wear makeup or anything like that. And so I tried to have a surgery and it didn't work. And so then, of course, the surgeons say, well, we should put breast implants in you. And I was reluctant, but a lot of my girlfriends did at the time because this was about 2003. Okay. So the whole Baywatch 
phenomenal. <laughs> right, right, right. Everybody had them. Big, Everybody right? had implants. Right, right. And even though I didn't want them, I thought, well, you know, but all my friends have them, so it's fine. So I did my research, thought that I found an amazing surgeon, and I did. And she was female, and she was conservative, and she worked for the university near where I uh, lived. So I got implants for the first time in the beginning of 2003. And I got something called capsular contracture pretty like immediately. And that is um, just in layman terms where the breast implants kind of get hard. People probably mm -hmm. have heard of that before. And so they usually necessitate being replaced. Sometimes it can work itself out. Sometimes it can't. So the following year, I had to have another surgery to wow. now replace them. And I'd had saline because that was those were the only implants available at the time. And when I went to replace them, a new surgeon, because my other one was on maternity leave, said, well, why don't we replace them with silicone? Now, I don't know if you remember, but back in the 90s, there was a huge lawsuit because there were so many sick women because of their breast implants. Right. So silicone breast implants were actually banned from the market for about a decade. So you couldn't even get silicone. So when he said, let's put silicone, I said, well, wait a minute, aren't those bad? And he said, well, no, they're new. They're coming back on the market and we've improved them and you're not going to have the rupture rate or anything else. So, you know, okay, you're the expert. And he said, and we're going to follow you with a study just to make sure everything's good because all of these women have been sick. And I didn't know the extent of their illness because I was too young at the time. So I get them replaced, not even thinking about it. Cause you know, when you're 20 something, I'm just right. thinking about like getting better so I can go out to right. the bar. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so um, I did. And you know, looking back, I did start having hormonal issues and things that didn't make sense. Like I couldn't sleep. I was having insomnia, night sweats, things that, somebody much older might be experiencing, like say with Mary, right. Mary Claus. And I did go to the doctor, my gynecologist, and I said, something's not right. And they said, no, this is just your normal. I said, but it's not normal. That's why I- right. I'm 20 something. I'm like, yeah, 25. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> now, I shouldn't be experiencing this for a good 20 years oh, or wow. more. Right. right. So I just kind of lived with it. I did notice, what now I know is inflammation, but I just thought it was weight gain up and down. And that's just not common. I mean, I'm very thin and I just always have worked out. I met mm -hmm. you now. Like, right, yeah, right. I love it. <laughs> so it didn't make sense, but I just thought, well, I'm getting older and maybe this is what happens. But it wasn't until a minor fender bender, uh, a gentleman hit me from behind, maybe five, 10 miles an hour at most in 2012 and it started a like cascade of symptoms that didn't make sense. I never would have. Just from a fender bender. Just from a fender bender because we kind of know now, now that I've been studying holistic medicine, that anytime you have a physical or emotional trauma and a car accident can be a trauma, even if it's not mm -hmm. a severe one, it can you know affect your immune system and I see all of this in patients now, women coming to me, oh, you know, I went through a really hard divorce or I lost a family member and suddenly I started getting sick. It wow. doesn't happen when you're looking at the body holistically. So all of a sudden, I mean, the inflammation was so horrible. I was in so much pain. It didn't make sense from a, such a minor car accident. Then I was getting vertigo. Um, my thyroid was going crazy. My hair started falling out. I was having a really hard time walking up stairs, like flights of stairs. I would get so winded. I remember um, a hike at Runyon Canyon and I thought I was having a heart attack. The heart palpitations were so bad. None of it made sense. You know, I'm sure my girlfriends thought, well, are you being dramatic? But yeah, I've never been. Hey, yeah. And yeah. I'm not a complainer. <laughs> right, right. So this kicked off a journey of seven and a half years. It would take seven and a half years to figure out that the thing making me sick, the things were right under yeah. my nose the entire time. And I was working in plastic surgery because I had started working in plastic surgery in my 20s because I wanted to help other women feel great about themselves too. Wow, that's full circle now. Now, did you said they got hard, right? 
Capsular contracture, yeah, it's scar tissue and it, the breast implants actually get hard and painful in some cases and their grades, the severity, so it can be, you know, kind of not as bad to actually seem quite right. as so you, you really couldn't tell, even though you were getting sick, you couldn't, you didn't, you didn't put two and two together. You didn't feel and go, this is really hard and something's not right here. Well, that was the first set. My right one started getting capsular contracture again, but it wasn't that severe. Um, no, and it was interesting. I would get a rash just under my breasts. And a lot of women do. I still didn't connect mm -hmm. it because when you have an implanted medical device, it becomes part of your body, you know, at least right. me. Right. You're not sitting there like, I've got these, you know, this medical device in every day. Like it just became part of me. And working in plastic surgery, I never had any women coming in complaining right. of any problems like mine. And then I'm not worth thinking about the 90s and what happened back then. And so even when I, a woman came out, Crystal Hefner, who was married to Hugh in 2017 and said she was sick. I did say to my boss at the time, I said, is it maybe my breast implants? Because I do sound a lot like her. And he said, he looked me in the eye and he said, no, there is no illness associated with breast implants. And that's uh, not true. <laughs> well, yeah. And, you know, it's funny because I, I read the, the literature you, you sent me okay. and I've been doing research and Aww. I can't believe the FDA covered up hundreds of thousands of incidents in relation to uh, uh breast implants and stuff like that and it's kind of sad because you know it's all about money it's mm -hmm. all about you know capital and making that making that almighty dollar and not really worrying about the, the the people who are walking around with these like you say vessels or you know foreign bodies inside of them for so long yeah you we know? deserve to know this you know and so that's really why i'm speaking out i'm not trying to ban implants. I'm not telling people what they should do with their bodies. Uh, I care about people. I've been a patient care coordinator for 20 some odd years. And so I wouldn't be doing that job if I didn't care. And so right. Right. when it when I figured it out, I thought of all of those patients over the years that I've taken care of. And I was so, I've been so worried, you know, like, how are they now? Are they sick? You know, of course I'm gonna worry about that. And so I planned on speaking out about this. You know, I just, I wasn't even like seeing the future. I figured out what it was and I had them explanted. That's what you call it. Right. Yeah. I, I got that from uh, Dr. Brenner on your uh, <laughs> explant. Implant, yeah. explant. It's like, get them out, exit. They exit out. Exactly. Well, everyone's learning the term now. Yes. And um, so I never even was thinking ahead of what was I going to do. But as I was recovering from my surgery and I was in some Facebook support groups for women who are dealing with this illness and wanting to know more. And by the way, just one of the Facebook groups has over, I think, 150,000 women in it now. Just oh, one. Wow. Just one. Last account, I found out it was, I think there were 297 Facebook groups all about this one subject. And for me, the holistic beauty coach on Instagram, I have a huge following. Um, and, and so anyway, so I never nice. speaking out about it, but then as I was reading all of these women saying, yeah, you know, I went back to my doctor and he said, you know, you should have, okay. yeah, these cause autoimmune problems, these cause hormonal. I thought to myself, we don't say that in consults. Nobody's ever had that conversation with me. I didn't even know this. And so if I didn't know it, how would these poor women? And I just thought, you know what? I'm gonna have these women's backs. I at least need to stand up for them. I've always been that person that likes to stand up for the underdog. Mm -hmm. And I thought they need, they need more women to support them because nobody even knows about them. That's true. And, and, and you have to think about this. I know a lot of women don't know about it, but think about how many men don't know like myself like i'm learning i learned explant i didn't know explant you know i when you say explain you say it too fast people think you said eggplant you're like no 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 eggplant eggplant you know you got to take it out okay All so right. you're removing removing it most men are are are, are, are oblivious, oblivious to all of this because what we think 
normally as a woman, just she looks a certain way. Yeah. You know, her body looks a certain way. You never think about what's inside. You only think about the exterior. Because right. what happens is you you look at we're all visual, mm -hmm. visual creatures by nature. So right. you always just look at the woman and go, oh, she's beautiful. She says, but you don't even know the problems and the complications and the health problems that are going on within that human being that you're looking at. Right. You know? Right. And when I started advocating I realized that even just from my guy friends and my guy friends have learned from this because when I first stated, you know, I had said that I wasn't feeling well and I have a lot of guy friends. I love, I love having guy friends. I'm like a tomboy. <laughs> um, and I said, I think it's my breast implants. And you know, one was an anesthesiologist and he said, Oh, Amanda, that sounds crazy. And he said, it's not your breast implants and don't remove them because you're going to regret it. And I said, no, 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 I, I'm going to do this. I need to know because I'm declining. And I'd already spent over $300,000 to try to wow. get that. And nothing was working. Nothing like temporarily, like if I was green juicing and doing my yoga and doing everything perfectly, the inflammation would get better. But then as soon as I say had sugar or went to a birthday and had some champagne, mm -hmm. it all come back and I wasn't sleeping. Your body. So those would trigger it, the sugar, the champagne, whatever certain things you ate and drink would trigger. Yes. And wow. so one of the symptoms of this is you become highly allergic because of all the chemicals in the implants. You can become highly allergic to all, all sorts of foods. Some women, like, there's barely anything that they can eat. Ooh, that's I know. sad. It's that's so horrible. That's and horrible. You're being, and you're having, you know, gut issues are a big one, hormonal issues, thyroid issues inflammation, hair is falling out, vision issues. Some of these women were having all of these symptoms at once. And so when people, I don't think they get it yet because they haven't known about this illness. Like when we say like, I have right. cancer or I broke a leg, you have mm -hmm. compassion and empathy. Right. Because you're like, oh, ouch, you know, that is very mm -hmm. cool when you break a leg or oh, God, cancer, you know, that's so awful. Mm -hmm. but with this, nobody really has, that hasn't gone through it themselves understands. And so I think they just think like, oh, you're tired and your hair is falling out. Right, right. No, bro. It's just irritable. I have like you're four right. things going on. And my immune system was essentially being depleted. I got seven viruses all at once. Um, hmm. Shingles, which I was really too young to have. Um, Epstein-Barr virus. It was just all signs that my immune system was not working properly. It was fighting your immune system and it was it was winning. Yes. And, uh, and when those foreign objects go in your immune system, your beautiful immune system is just doing its job, right? Right, right. Fighting them and it's putting all of its efforts towards fighting the foreign objects rather than taking care of your body. Yes. And I can say that some guys are probably thinking, oh, she's just tripping. She's just going through this. She's OK. She's just gr gr grouchy. She just mean. She just she, she's <laughs> mental pause, your PMS. They just men have a tendency to just say it's nothing. And and rather than listen, you know, yeah. And, it, and, and, it's, and I'm, I'm glad you had some people in your corner that that were there as well because i'm sure some, that you've had some people in your corner that said hey uh, my, mom, my mom was in my corner i couldn't Good. have gotten through it without her she was everything she was just like me researching every day we we're on google every minute you know like what could this be i decided early on it was very evident to me that the doctors the western medicine doctors i was seeing just had no clue like they didn't think it was alarming that i had 58 pounds of inflammation You've seen me. Can you imagine me with 50 right. pounds of inflammation? 58. Wow. And which, by the yeah. way, it's so scary because that's a sign that something's going on, that your brain and your organs are being protected. Right. Well, they were like, oh, you're just gaining a couple of pounds. Yeah. No big deal. Are you sure you're not pregnant? No, I'm not pregnant. <laughs> not the case, you're like, that's not pregnant. Wait, I'm, I'm getting heavy all over for some reason. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Right. It's not just the belly. Right. No, I look like the Michelin man. Okay, that's what it looked like. And then you, you probably look like a cute Michelin man, but okay. I kind of looked, and this is a compliment, and I think mean, she's a beautiful woman, but I looked like Kim Kardashian when she was pregnant because everything was just overflowing. But that's right. not body type. I'm right. like all of right. one. You're so very I'm petite, right? 
a little different. It's hey, she's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. And I thought, and I thought about this. I thought to myself because I have a daughter, and I was thinking that, you know, as as parents, when you when you have kids, especially young girls, you have to let them know and encourage them that that that, and let them know that they're beautiful to God the way God made them. Yes. First and foremost, you got to put you got to plant that seed in them when they're really little. Yeah. That they're beautiful all the time because they need to hear it. They need they need they need a, a role model. They need a parent. They need someone to just just keep ingraining in their in their brain. Because when you get older, you're bombarded with everything from television to film to magazines to this and that. And what, what, how you supposed to be, how you supposed to look, how you supposed yeah. to care, what kind of body you supposed to have. Yeah. And every and and everybody's beautiful in their own right, and that's what people have to realize. Because have you noticed that there's there, everyone has someone that loves them. Mm-hmm. You might see somebody go, oh, that person, that person's eye, right. you know, they're not that attractive. But guess what? There's somebody that loves that unattractive person. You might think is unattractive, but they're really not. And vice versa when it comes to men and women, and that's what we have to realize as human beings. And it goes much deeper than that. That's why when you tell someone you know, that you, that they're beautiful. You give them a compliment. You have to say it and you have to be genuine. You don't just say it for the sake of saying it. I don't, nothing comes out of my mouth unless it's real. And I feel it in my heart. That's why when I said something to you, I stopped and turned around and spoke to you. Now look, we're having this conversation about something that's really intense and really deep and that women need to hear. And that's, that's beautiful, you know? And I mean, it's all energy. We're all energy. We're going to just learn more and more about that. Right. Cause this mm-hmm. is a Right. Right. And energy. I have never, and I can honestly say this, I never was like into Brad Pitt, you know, when people would be like, oh, isn't he so hot or whatever? I'd be like, uh, I don't know. I mean, is he cool? Is he funny? Like, right. I've right. never been attracted just off of. Off of right. It takes a lot more, right? And not to say that there's anything wrong with that if somebody has. I'm just saying, like, I have to get to know someone. I have to, like, jive with them. I right. have to bond out with them. Like, yeah. So for me, like, that's just not my deal. Right. What I can say about men, and that's why I'm really trying to get this out to more men because okay. they need their support, right? Because we mm-hmm. do care about what men think. But when I started doing this, I was shocked by how many even husbands were like, I don't want her to get her implants out. And we're like, but she's really sick. And you don't you want your wife back? Well, yeah. You know, and I'd have to sit and talk with the husbands and say, you know, there's hope. I mean, when I removed mine, I got better. And it's been really beautiful. I actually just posted a really nice video with three husbands who had gone through it with their wives and what they noticed. And it just, it makes me really happy that men are starting to talk about it and men are starting right. to say, you don't need to do this for us. Because because as you, you, you and I both know, sometimes women get them because for their man, not so much because they want to, it's yeah. because their man wants that. Their man wants them to look a certain way. Mm-hmm. The man wants them to look like that woman over there or that celebrity or that model over there and not because of who they are and deep inside because you married that person or you're in a relationship with that person mm-hmm. for much deeper than just their physical attributes. But people have a tendency to do that. And women do it for their men a lot. And and men be like, I don't want to get rid of that because I like seeing them, you know, when they walk around and you know, and that's not that's not a good that's not a good thing. I think we need to change that behavior big time. Yeah, yeah because you know, I was talking to some of my guy friends who were they and they didn't know. It's not like that they were trying to talk me out of it. They didn't know. They were worried, they were concerned for me. Like, we don't want you to do something that's gonna disappoint you. Mm-hmm. And I had that feeling of, I even said to one of them, I said, you know what, actually, it doesn't even matter what you think, because I'm doing this. And I actually don't want any of the voices. I don't want anybody trying to sway me. I need to do this for me to make sure that this isn't it. And I thought about it in that moment. And I thought, you know what, even if it doesn't come out looking great, I didn't care because I was just so desperate to feel better. But I thought to myself, the man who I'm going to be with anyway, he mm-hmm. doesn't think I am so dope. For Amen. Amen. A hundred and a million percent. Yeah. A million percent. So it was, I just knew, I just felt that in my, I just, right. in my whole being. That because that. I do a joke on stage and, and, and women love this joke. I do a joke about how, how breasts aren't important. Right. Oh, really? <laughs> I do, I do a funny joke and it's, it's, it's a long joke. 
and it's, it's, it's very visual and I love doing it. And whenever I do it, you see the women, they just clap and, and the guys look at me like, I can't believe you said that because, uh-huh. and, I, and I don't really don't care. It's, it's from my heart, it's my opinion, it's how I feel. Yeah. And, I, and I, I talk about how, how breasts aren't important. And if a woman walks me with breasts on her back, I would still care for her. It doesn't really matter. They don't have to be, she can have one breast. It does not matter. Mm-hmm. You know, and I when I talk about that and I make it funny, people laugh, but I'm really being sincere when I say this because of the simple fact that, you know, if a woman is beautiful deep down inside, it's that's all that matters. If a man is beautiful deep down inside, that's all that matters. All that matters. And I'll give you I've worked in the medical field before comedy, right? Really? Yes, yes. I worked in the I worked in the dialysis unit. I worked as a lab, I worked in the, in the hospital as a, a medical assistant. I did, I was actually a biology major studying to be a doctor prior to comedy, but comedy mm-hmm. found me and then I became a comedian, but I'm nice. still a doctor because laughter is the best medicine. True that. So I I, I remember going to the, <laughs> to the unit and our charge nurse was, uh, I wouldn't say she was ugly. She was not an attractive to most men. If she she didn't have that look where, where when she walk in, guys were oh, she was she was an average looking young lady. Okay, but she was a sweetheart, right? Yeah, I mean she was amazing. Her yeah. personality was so beautiful, and I, I kid you not, man. I can't. I, one day I came to work and she was so sweet. I woke, came in in the morning, and I said something to her. And she spoke back to me, and when she looked at me, she was like a model. I'm not making this up. Yeah. I've never seen anything like this in my life. Yeah. That woman that everybody thought was just I, right, mm-hmm. she was a model yeah. because, of her, because of her energy, her personality, and what she, totally. what she gave. Totally. And it was so beautiful. I was like, wow, man, this yeah. is, this is and, and you, and I'm young, I'm in my twenties, you know, I'm looking at this and I'm like, this is, this is, you have to, it, it, I think it takes a, not just an open-minded person, but a deep thinker and person that can accept humans for who they are. Not not where they from, not what they drive, not right. how big their breasts are, what their butt look like, or nationality, whatever. But just beautiful yeah. people, yeah. man, it's a wonderful thing when you when you can realize that and you capture that and you realize, I'm I got that, you know. And, and usually when you have that, like you say, there's the connection. That's where the connection comes in. Yeah, you know? well, we can live in this on this three D earth that's all about superficiality and materialism superficial, phony, fake, keeping up with the whomevers. Right. You know, I've always said this, like I've never been trying to keep up with anybody. Like they're trying to keep up with me. Right. Um, and so it comes from an inner confidence, you know, that whether you just have it and you're born with it, I always say like, I'm a Scorpio. We have more confidence than we probably should. And I always have. <laughs> like, <you> know, <laughs> I also grew up with a lot of boys. Like I'm the only girl of like all boy cousins, except for one other girl. And so I don't know. I think that like growing up with that, like you get teased all the time, whatever you get a thicker skin. It makes you tough. Yeah. It makes you tough. And, and, and the thing about it is that, you know, this, and I used to do a joke about this years ago when a boy liked a girl, what did he do? They can hit her and hit you. And yeah. Yeah. That's his way of saying he liked you. So so sometimes when you when they're going to making you tough or whatnot, they actually like you. Some mm-hmm. of these kids liked you when you was when yeah. you were a little girl. So they would hit you and make you tough, and they would tease you, but they really liked you. Right. But those guys didn't know how to express it, didn't know how to say anything, or, or because we as men, back old school, your fathers told you to be a certain way. Right. To right. not show emotions, to not cry, to not do this, to not do that. And you know, you can't, you can't, you can't do this because you're soft if you tell a girl she looks like this and she acts like that. And that's not right. You know, that's why I've always told, I've told my father, my brother, my men that I loved him way back in the day before it was cool to say, I love you. I love that. No, we need more of that in the world because where were we going before COVID happened? Right. We were not going in a good direction. Right. And it's, not good, but I, I, I have hope that it's going to get better. But I was watching for me, this is what I noticed because I wasn't dating a lot when I was sick, but I noticed like the whole dating app thing. And it seemed to be like a lot of, um, and again, I'm not trying to judge. It's who doesn't matter what I think it matters. Right. Right. right exactly. I just saw like a lot of people like the whole dating vibe. I mean, I've always thought that it was crazy that like even my generation, we didn't really date. We went out with like big groups of people. 
And I felt like I was seeing that kind of really spiral downwards with all these kind of relationships where it was like very anonymous, almost like meeting somebody online, then you go and hook up or whatever, then you never talk to each other again. And like, what is this? I don't like it. Right. Well, yeah. I don't like it. But. Right. I'm, I'm the same way. I, uh, being in the business, being an entertainer and being on the road and traveling and, and meeting several people, I've never ever, even before a comedy, I never thought that I needed to go anywhere to find someone. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is go anywhere, like go on the internet or go on a dating site or go mail order bride or any of that kind of stuff. No, I, never, right. I never thought about any of that kind of stuff. I thought, I actually thought it was funny. So I wrote material about it. Yeah. You know, I've, I've, I've always met people one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Either we vibe or we don't, we connect mm -hmm. or we don't, but yeah. you keep it genuine and, and, and let the chips fall where they may. And I've Thank always you. been that way. I love that. That's the only way to be. And if you don't, if you don't, because that, honestly, you I mean, on internet, you can find a lot of cuckoo birds. I mean, you know, there's a lot of crazies out there and you don't want to ever get caught up into that, you know, I, I believe. So, you know, every generation is different, but with internet and with the way social media is and all this other kind of stuff, it's easy to, to get pulled into it. It's easy for the, for the, for the, the younger generation to get pulled into it and think that's the only way to meet someone. Yeah. No, I know. I am. I hope that like more people, like what we were talking about the other day, just being more genuine. I really hope that this is, is teaching people that to be better to one another. I feel like I've always been like that. Um, you know, even like when I was younger and going out, like my girlfriends would be like, oh, we go out and like all the guys talk to you. Well, they talked to me because I was nice to them. <laughs> right. And my friends, I'm just being honest, they would like put on airs like, oh, I'm right, 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 right. I'm, to be bitchy. I'm like, well, I'm that's hard to get. Right, right, right. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that's attractive. I don't know. No, it's not. It's not. I have a funny story because uh, talking about explants. Yes. I think this is a funny story. I, I thought about this when we had that conversation and I wanted to bring it up. Oh. I, I went on, I went on a date with a young lady and we were at, I want to say it was, it might've been at her place. And this was years ago. And she said, I left my gummies in the bathroom. And I'm like, your gummies? I like, I like gummy bears. Yeah. And I didn't know what she meant, but gummies are the the the, the gummy it. gels that you put in. I didn't yeah. know they called gummies. I, I didn't know you called them gummies either. Yeah, I, yeah. I, so I, I was them, shocked but... because I'm like gummies. And I'm like, why would you leave your gummies in the bathroom? I mean, uh -huh. we, we, I like gummy bears. Why don't we have some gummy bears and eat them? But no, they were actual the gummy gels. Yeah. Or they call puppets, was, right? Right. And she was actually embarrassed. And I said, there's no reason to be embarrassed. You're beautiful with or without your gummies, you know? <laughs> Matter of fact, let's go to the store and pick up some gummies. How yeah. about that? And we can just eat them and laugh about the term that they use for these gels because I think it's hilarious. This is my first time seeing them and, and hearing about them, but they... You know they do the they do the job. If you want to look more full, you just put them in. You take them out, well, and you don't have to put that inside of your body. I think a lot of women who have been sick from putting them inside their body probably wish that they had just stuck with the, the gummies. The gummies. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to think of that every time I think of gummies. Right, right. And I was like, wow, I didn't even know. But I, that was my first time seeing it too. I didn't know they made those. I knew oh. they made padded bras, but I didn't know that they made where you can just take them out. Yeah. There's yeah. a movie. I want to say it's called I'm going to get you sucker. I think that's the movie. And okay. the, it's with Ken Ivy Wayans and, uh, and I love the Wayans brothers. And, oh. and the girl is, I think it was, I'm going to get you, I have to double check. But anyway, the, the girl in the movie, they were together and she started taking stuff off. She took her hair off. Uh, yeah. Oh, I out. remember that scene. She like took I don't her leg know. off. <laughs> she took her butt <laughs> off. She took everything off. That was to me, that was classic. I'm like, that is a great scene. That that's a funny, so funny scene, so you know? Right. And, and and guess what? If that individual, that guy could love that girl after all that, man, that's a that's a real that's a real trooper. That's a keeper right there. He's a keeper. I think that's so dope though. I mean, I just love that. Like, and again, I've always been natural, so like I'm not, you know, into all that, but you just get to a point too where it's like, I just don't care. You know, right. I never cared about that. Like when you're younger and everyone's like, Oh, you're so pretty. It's almost kind of annoying. I'm like, well, what does that mean? Like, do you dig right. my, it's like you're digging my energy is what you may be trying to tell me instead. Right. Because everybody's idea of that is so different. 
Right. And when a guy tells you when you were young that you're so pretty, it was never about energy. That's for sure. <laughs> you know, as much as it'd be beautiful, it'd be nice if it was energy, but it's usually because of the way you look. Yeah. You know, hormones, young kid, you know, yeah, you like no. to smile, whatever. He's no. thinking about thinking about how he can get you a certain area away from everybody. That's the beauty. He's like, I wish I can get her back to my place or some of my car or whatever. You know, we make out of my car. You know, yeah. that's usually what it was, you know. Probably. Nine, nine, 99.999999% of the time. <laughs> Maybe that 1%, you know. Right. But, but right. like you, just like you myself, I am, I've always been, I've always been, I said a deep thinker. So, because I'd always thought, okay, I'll give you an example. I, had, I was, I was going to, I had a relationship with, I had to choose between two women, okay? Okay. They were they were friends. They were both nice. They were sweet. Yeah. But I had to choose. I'm in my 20s. I had to choose which one was better for me in the long run, like how long it would last. I didn't want to it wasn't like I had to she was the prettiest. I'm going to take her cuz she did this and she act like this and that. it was because I wanted to know what was better for me in my life at that particular time. Yeah. Is yeah. she the type of person that I can be around? that I can laugh with, I can talk to, I can tell my jokes. She can tell me something funny. Yeah. We can, we can go hiking. We can go work, working out. I had to think about all of this and I'm in my twenties and I thought about that and I was like, that's, that's how people should be. That's good thinking. <laughs> in my twenties, I was like, I was thinking. <laughs> Plus, well, I'm I'm not thinking like that. I was like, oh, I'll get married. <laughs> I'm not even thinking about that at all. Right now. Good for you. Good for you. I was never like that. I was never like, oh, I did was when I was younger in high school. Of course, I wanted to have like five kids. And I always said to myself, I will only be in love once. And that is the person I'm going to marry. And it's so interesting. I've never been in love. And I feel like that is going to still happen. Where it will. It will. It will. Yeah. And five, okay. So I'm thinking the five kids comes from the fact that you you have a small family like you were you only child well no i have a cancer moon and so whenever you've got a cancer aspect in your chart you love kids and i do love children um but it was interesting i yeah i thought for sure i would have them and it just didn't work out that i met that right person but the bigger thing was when i was sick i was sick from 35 to a little like 43. oh wow wow that's so a big, big well, i don't remember exactly how old i was but um those were the years that I would have had kids. And so there's no way I was going to have kids when I was sick. So it just didn't happen for me. And I went through that kind of sad phase. And, and then I was like, you know what? My life now, I'm so busy and I'm taking care of all of these patients. I wouldn't be able to do my job and to be a great mom. With so five kids, yeah. <laughs> right. So, yeah. And you, you know what's, 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 what is interesting is that as, as, as sad as it sounds, it was the right. It, God made everything the way it was supposed to be. Because, totally. because by you going through what you went through made you a better person, made you a stronger person, and made you able to help others. Yes. Yes. And, and if you had never experienced that, who knows? You know, it could it, 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 you'd have went a different path. I mean, we could have gone a hundred different paths every step of the way. Right, right, I, right. So grateful and so thankful that my path ended up like this. It wasn't perfect. I went through a really lots of hard struggles, but I realize now God put me through every single one of those to give me the strength that I have today to do what I'm doing today. So all of the roads led to this, I believe. Yes. And you're hundred percent. And it's a beautiful thing. And now you're here today to spread the love and spread the energy and, and knowledge. And I, I appreciate you. A hundred percent. I mean, this is an epidemic right now of this many women who are sick from their breast implants, and most of them don't even know. They just know right. I haven't been feeling well. I've got all these symptoms. They're not getting better. When you look at the symptom list, maybe even we could somehow post it later, but they can definitely look at my Instagram, the Holistic Beauty Coach, and see the list of symptoms. They're symptoms of many things. So, you know, um, hair loss, vision issues, thyroid. I mean, right? That doesn't, right. so that's why it's really tricky to figure out and there's no diagnosis for it. There's no test. So you just have to think to yourself, have I been sick for a while, not feeling well? Has any, have I gotten any other diagnoses that make sense? Um, if not, 
do you have breast implants? Did these symptoms start after? Right, getting, right. Whether it be right after or years later, because like in my case, I did have little things, but it was years, like seven and a half years later that I really started feeling ill. I have women who felt great for 20 years and then they start getting symptoms. Every body is different. Right. And so then to figure it out and you know, when doctors then aren't supporting you and they're saying, oh, this isn't real, that's not true, these women are lying. Well, that just severs the mind-body connection. And so then you start thinking, gosh, am I losing my mind? Do I have anxiety? Yeah. Luckily, I'm the type who I'm like, nobody's talking to me and trying to talk me into me, whether I'm losing my mind or not. Like, I'm very clear headed. I know exactly what time it is. You're not going to convince me that I'm making this up or right. And so right. we have to have the courage to advocate for ourselves because nobody's going to care about you like you. I say that. Right. That's true. And nobody, nobody honestly, no one knows your body like you. No one knows. You know if you don't feel well. Yes. And trust me, yes. with all these things going yes. on, you don't feel good. You mm -hmm. know it. You know. And 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 okay. And and usually doctors, excuse me, usually doctors will <clears throat> they'll say no, it's not the breast implants. They'll say that. Yeah. Now, some don't know because they they don't have the knowledge. Mm -hmm. And some realize that it could be a problem, but it's already a problem, <laughs> you know, problem. it's a big problem, it's a big problem in our industry. And right? I really, I really get frustrated when I see young girls, I'm talking about 16, 17, 18, 20, just yeah. young getting them. And I don't know. It hurts me. It really does. It really does. I've mm -hmm. I've thought about that for many years being out here in, in Southern California mm -hmm. because you know Britney Spears didn't got her she got hers at 16. I don't I didn't know if she did or not. She actually did a post recently that said she was thinking about them and somebody wrote me and they said she already has them. I have no idea. That's what did. I that's what that's what that's what that was put out years ago in the media, I should say. That she got breast implants around yeah, 16, 17, yeah. you know. Yeah. So no, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing, Dean, because I thought, okay, we're, I'm in the beauty capital of the world, Beverly Hills. Why isn't anyone talking about natural beauty? We right. don't all, we should all have choices. We all deserve choices with our health care, with everything. If, if I got cancer tomorrow, I don't know that I necessarily would do chemotherapy. Right, right. That's my right. That's my yes. right. I want to do it naturally. We all deserve to have choices. So I thought I need to do more about the holistic beauty because these young girls, I want to be an example for them. Yes. Get to be my age. I don't want them to be so sick that they're not enjoying their lives. So again, not trying to tell you what to do with your body. Mm -hmm. I'm just simply saying this was my experience. This is what I'm seeing in these patients that I see each day. Please be aware, please educate yourself and just know that, you know, your toxic load, we all, everybody has its tipping point. So whether your toxins are coming from an environment where you're working, where you're living, right. breast implants, shampoos, personal health products, they're like right. notorious for these forever chemicals. Right. All I'm saying is choose wisely. Because, you know, when you're young, you think that you're invincible. Correct. I'll tell you, I right. do, but you're not. You're not. not. And Nothing. it sneaks up on you too. <laughs> sneaks up on you. 20, turn to 40, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And yeah. you're like, well, I'm just 20 last yeah. week. Now I'm four. Okay, so yeah, it, it's just, that's life. It's like this. So you, you really have to make wise decisions and choices when you're young. You should at least speak to someone. Listen, talk to someone who, who knows, your elder, someone that can help you get, navigate through this. I love my elders. In fact, I mean, I've always loved older people. I, my parents are my best friends. Um, I've always yeah. loved older people. And my parents, I mean, I've had to apologize so many times. It's ridiculous for all the great advice that they gave me that I rolled my eyes at. <laughs> you say, I understand now, huh? <laughs> Mom, remember that time you told me? I, I got you. I got it now. I got it now. Yeah. I've done that. I've called my parents when I first moved here. I called mm -hmm. my parents and had to reach back and say, I see what you mean. I feel you. I understand now that I'm an adult and I'm out here. Yeah. I understand. 
and everyone here wants to be perfect. You want you don't want you want the perfect body, perfect legs, perfect, you know, getting liposuction left and right. And liposuction is just as deadly as all of it. And the sad thing about it is, you know, you don't I don't want to have no cellulite. Just it's too much cellulite. Just a little bit. If you look, I, I always say this too. A little cellulite might make for a great night. Quit playing. <laughs> Just leave it alone. A little <laughs> cellulite might make for a great night. Just leave it alone. Nice. Well, no, and the thing is, cellulite too oftentimes are trapped toxins within your lymphatic system. So it's also a sign. Your body's constantly mm -hmm. giving you signs, and we need to listen to our bodies. Um, that like, so let's then go get some lymph massages, right? Let's right. do cleans. Right. Yes. Instead of like going to try to have a procedure that may or may not do anything right. that could be right. other issues for you. And again, I am not anti-plastic surgery. The plastic surgery procedures that I love were always the ones like, um, you know, like skin cancer removal. It's right. called Motor People do. Yes. Yeah. Body contouring yes. after massive weight loss. Hey, if you've had a child and you've got, you're like, you need a tummy tuck. You, I More think that's what I don't like is seeing people having excessive plastic surgery that is not safe. Yes. That's it. And I, if a doctors don't agree with that, well, then I, you need to go check yourself because right. I don't see how anybody could disagree with me on that. Right. And it's helped people. Women that have had breast cancer and they wanted to get implants. That's another thing. That's fine. You know, but when you're perfectly healthy and there's no complications and no problems and you you get it and you notice something yeah. you need to be aware of you 100 you need to you need to step yeah. up and say this is not normal i don't feel right i've okay. never felt this way and i need to figure this out and if there's no remedy to it then it's probably what i have inside of me the foreign body it makes perfect sense i mean even a little splinter wants to get out so you can imagine that you've got these two foreign objects full of chemicals and heavy metals above your vital organs that are essentially blocking your lymphatic flow. Mm -hmm. It, it makes total, total sense. Now, if you said to me, like, could you, would you go back and not do it? I would do it again only because in my situation, this has now become kind of my life's purpose. So I know that God put me through that everything necessitating the implants, getting the implants, getting sick, working in the industry. I was supposed to go through all that. Would I want to go through it again? No, I don't because it was right. really dark and it was really tough. But um, I would do it again if it meant helping all of these women. Yeah, I would. That's beautiful. That's wonderful. Yeah. And and the thing about it too is that when you when I when I look at being in LA and Hollywood and in Southern California, you know, the, the the effects of plastic surgery excessive like you said exactly excessive and unnecessary we'll use that word as well you know. this is unnecessary <laughs> so yes unnecessary yes. to do that to your body and to yourself and not realize that there may be some uh some complications is not is not good it's just not good I, I, and i and i and i feel bad for a person that feels that they have to do that to actually be attractive or be wanted or loved or or to to get, to find someone to love them yeah you know but but that's where it comes down to all of us we need to change this I, i'm only one person so i mean i'm not going to be able to change it all right but i think that we are going into the new earth and i think that our values are going to change and i think going through this whole experience things are going to change but how about this how about just better informed consent? Because the way I look at it is, if somebody had just said to us back then, okay, you could get autoimmune illness, you could have hormonal disruption, there, they are foreign objects at the end of the day, they need to be replaced, whatever. Fine, then I am taking on that responsibility. Right, they right. Understand all of the risks, they could, you could get cancer, you could get this and that. Fine. And then if I still want to go forward with it, well, that's on me then. Right. That's I'm true. Not anybody else. Right. I agree. I agree. So. Now, during my podcast, I always do something called RQT time. Okay. RQT. Not okay. like R cutie, but yeah. R like random question time. Okay. Uh oh. Okay. So this is a random question. All right. You answer it and you say why. It's an answer and why. Okay. 
answer and why. Okay. And why? Why you? Why you said? Oh, this? Okay. Why you yeah. picked that answer? Okay. okay. So would you rather? Oh gosh. Would you rather is actually the name of this game, Dean? And that's what. <laughs> no, 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 no. I won this game. I'm like, okay. okay. All right. All right. So, <laughs> would you rather jump out of a plane blindfolded for a million bucks, or? wrestle in a swamp with an alligator that's been have all of his legs tied together for a million bucks jump out of a plane blindfolded for a million bucks or wrestle an alligator but the alligator's legs are tied up for a million bucks which one would you rather do and why the alligator and i know that sounds crazy okay all right so all right. terrified of heights that I cannot even, and it's gotten worse as I've gotten older for whatever reason. Oh, wow. It's terrified. So I, when people are like, I'm jumping out of a plane, I would never do that. So it would be the alligator. Okay. <laughs> that's a very, that's a very good, that's a very good answer because yeah. heights, I don't, I'm not a heights person either, but I, I do go hiking, but certain areas, I don't go hiking everywhere. Uh, yeah. But you've hiked, you've hiked, you've hiked the, the camp. I love Especially okay, so that, but that's hike, hike. <laughs> But it depends on if you hike in and they have the drop on this side and the drop on that side. That's where it gets kind of fishy for me. How about the windy roads in Malibu? That's kind of scary. Driving down the windy road? Driving uh, through the canyons of Malibu? That's kind it's of scary, but I could do that. Okay. Maybe because I'm the driver. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. If, you, if you're the passenger, you're like, oh, this person does a good job. <sighs> right. You know, my father, when we were back in the day, back in San Francisco, he would drive over by Stinson Beach. And when you go up by Stinson Beach, way high up, and then you go around, you start coming towards San Francisco and up in there, it, it the drops are really bad. And he used to drive fast. We had a Mercedes yeah. and he would just be rolling and we had a station wagon. And I'm like, this is a station wagon. And he'd be rolling fast. And I, I was afraid of heights then, but I trust my father. I trusted him. Did you know that I'm from the Bay Area? Are you know really? Yeah, I didn't know that you were. We didn't discuss. Yes, yes, I'm from uh, uh, Oakland, San Francisco Bay Area. Yeah, I went to school in in, in Northern I California. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I'm from Hillsboro, right next to. Oh, really? Yeah, I know Hillsboro. Hillsboro. Yeah. Yes, I perform. That's why I started doing comedy. You know, I started there, then I came here, and uh, my family's still there. Everyone, my brothers, everybody's still back in Northern Cali, and I'm here. Please. But my heart's always been Northern Cali, all the way. Still is. I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for the Warriors, 100%. Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I'm total Warriors. So yesterday, I went to my buddy's house in Anaheim. We watched it over there, and I was just, like, happy just that we won this game, and we have one more, and it'll be a wrap. Yep. yep. Nice. So I got my Warriors hat. If you see my Instagram, I got some Warriors gear that my buddy sent me from Northern Cali. He I'm a me. basketball fan. I went to Gonzaga. Oh, you went to – oh, Really? Yeah. You were the Gonzaga? Zaga, yeah. Zaga, Zaga, Zaga. Washington, but yes, yeah. I performed up there. The basketball team at Gonzaga. Zaga. Yes, I love it. I love it. I've always liked their the colors and their and their sweatshirts. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> so I've, I've I've met people on the road and I'd be like, look, I'm performing at your campus, but you got to give me a sweatshirt. Nice. Yeah, that is great performing at college campuses. Yes, I, I've I've okay. there, Iowa. I wanted to Iowa because it's the hawk. Yeah. So there were certain certain ones I've always wanted because of the, their mascot. But but I'm a big Cal Bear fan. Hands I down. I have a vintage Jayhawks t-shirt that I wear to bed sometimes. Oh, do you? Yeah. Vintage. It's vintage. No, the hawk got one eye. He just said, <laughs> you know it's vintage. <laughs> I was like a teenager. That's oh, cool. yeah. He has one eye, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love basketball. I used to be the voice of the Sonics. Did you? The Seattle yeah. Supersonics? For a while, yeah. That is crazy. My best friend. The guy in Anaheim. Yeah. His his fiance is from Seattle. Okay. So I met when I met him, she was there when the Seattle Supersonics was there. And my fraternity brother played for the Seattle Supersonics. Who is Alden, it? Alden Polonese. Oh my gosh, I totally remember him. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So oh. when I performed in Washington, we all hung out back in the day. <laughs> well, I love that. Sonics. Wow. Very, very upset about the whole thing. I mean, I won't go to Starbucks. And... Oh, me too. Me too. I'm, I'm upset. I, I, I like Seattle. That's messed up. 
It is messed up. <laughs> Starbucks. Yeah. You, said, you only go to coffee bean now. <laughs> I don't even do that anymore. I'm healthy. My girlfriends are drinking mushroom coffee now. Like that's what's mushroom good. coffee? What is really what good is for you? Mushrooms are so great for you. So I yes, I, I have mushroom tacos though. You ever had mushroom tacos? Oh, I have not. No. Oh, they have a good, great vegan. I got to take you, Amanda. Great oh, vegan great. joint oh. uh, called El Cocinero. Ooh. El Cocinero, El Cocinero. They, yes, they have they have the best tacos, best vegan tacos. Sounds great. And I'm not I'm not a I wouldn't say I'm a vegan, but I haven't eaten meat in a couple of years. Yeah. So I I've tried a lot of a lot of vegan stuff, and I've I'm, mm -hmm. I like it. It's gotten much better. It used to be it used to suck back in the day. Yeah, good. Vegan, vegan is good now. I love that. I just love everyone eating well. That's what I like to see. I get very sad when I see. The line out the block, you know, the fast food or a Starbucks. Oh, yes, I know, I know. You know, you go to McDonald's or wherever these places where it's just like a, a trough conveyor belt of food coming through, and it's just yeah, we need to eat better. And and when you eat better, you you, you don't have to worry about certain side effects that mm -hmm. and I'm not talking about just with uh with the breast implants and all that, but just yeah. in general. You right. eat better, your health is you know, you feel better. Yeah, That's no, why I'm out right. On my Instagram, we talk about all of it. I had a really good post. I'm trying to think of it. We're not dying from um, drive-bys. We're dry, we're dying from drive-throughs. I like that. I like that. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Now, I want to say this. I don't want to hold you too much longer, but I do have a question. Okay. Uh, and, and I think this is an important one because women that have that have gotten breast implants, implants back in the day and they try to sell, well, silicon, saline, silicon, saline, silicon. Mm -hmm. Now, was saline much more safer than silicon? Sil uh, silicone, I'm sorry, silicon. I'm thinking Silicon Valley. <laughs> was, it, was it much better than silicone? Well, here's the problem. So when all these women back in the 90s had issue, and again, I was too young, I don't remember, but they were saying the, the implants had ruptured silicone getting into their chest cavities, which of course would not be good. So when they were banned, the focus was on the saline and the safer alternative. So yes, if it's gonna rupture, of course you would want saline in your chest right. cavity rather than silicone. I don't think anybody would argue that. But what they didn't tell us is the casing of the implants are both exactly made up of the same material. Uh. Silicone, over 40, highly toxic chemicals and heavy metals. So at the end of the day, there's not really a difference other than what's inside in gotcha. case it ruptures. Right. So I think that's really upsetting to women. And I sometimes have to be the bearer of bad news and say, I just want you to know your saline implants. Well, they actually are encased in the same chemical compound as the silicone ones. And that's a problem because once it ruptures, that that material gets into you. And even before it ruptures, it's still inside of you, the, well, the casing, right? There's a study that even just came out that says that the chemicals can bleed through. It's called gel bleed through the implants. And so, mm -hmm. yes, that's a big problem. And it's again, comes back to just knowledge, information, education, informed consent, all of these things, right? Because right. I, I shouldn't now be having to educate these women and let them know what's inside their own body. In fact, doctors even will look at the list of, of chemicals and say to me, oh, those aren't in a breast implant. And I'll say, yeah, they are. I just got this right off of the website of the manufacturer. And then the doctors will look at me and say, why are those chemicals in an implant? <laughs> like, and I you know, ask I me, make it right. you should do some research on what you're putting in a human. <laughs> Right, like I, would, I don't know why. Now, now these are doctors that the plastic surgeons ask you this question. A couple have, yes. Woo, that's deep. Yeah, that is deep. Oh my gosh, that is deep. Well, again, I get it. They're busy. They yeah. they're trusting that the edge, the all the research and everything is being done by the manufacturers, and so they're just doing right. their job. They can't read everything that comes. That's through. true. That's true. So it, it, it gets ran by the FDA, right? Or no? Well, they are the governing body that's supposed to be protecting. But, you know, I post too on my Instagram all the chemicals that are in children's cereals that are approved by the FDA and they're carcinogenic. 
So yeah. you don't have to open your it's time to open your eyes everyone. It is. It's time <laughs> to open your eyes. I I've I've learned a lot running into you and 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 meeting you and I I'm very thankful and happy that we've able, were able to connect that yeah. day and today. And they were both Northern Caliites or whatever we want to call it. Ooh, you're not alone. <laughs> Go Warriors Thursday. Oh, we got a win on Thursday in Boston. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, everybody's been asking, oh man, I love that Warriors hat. Where you get it from? I tell them it's not here. It's in Northern California. My friend got it for me. He, I don't know where he got it from, but he he yeah. sent me one. I said, I liked it. He said, it's, it's a beautiful hat. It says cool. Oak Town. It says Golden State 510. It's, it's nice. Ooh, and I love I, hats. Oh yeah, hats. I love mine too. So. But I'm not used to the ones like the young kids they wearing with the with the flat build. I like mine's like yours, curved. Yeah. But yeah. that one, since it's it's a short build, I have to wear it like that. It was my first time wearing. You yeah. look you look on the picture, it's the first my first time wearing it. So it was weird. It didn't feel uncomfortable, but it was like it's not me, but it was cool. People liked it, I guess. Everybody liked it. But I think they liked it because it was just warrior's hat and it was different. Yeah, oh yeah. I like and I and I met a young lady that used to be a soul train dancer. I met her at, at Santa Monica. Stop it. And, Are you serious? You know that that was my dream. I say it all the time to be a solid, what, to be a soul train dancer? dancer, solid gold dancer. Oh, solid gold dancer. You could have been soul train too. They had white girls on soul train too. But at solid gold, <laughs> if they had the dancers that would do the countdown each week. And I was just certain, I was like, this is what I'm doing, mom. I would watch it every week. And <laughs> so did the, did the, how did it go? So did the girls like, when you say countdown, like when it, when it first came on, did they start dancing during the countdown? No. So during the show, Marilyn McCoo was the host. I can't believe I know I Marilyn McCoo, Billy Davis Jr. Marilyn McCoo, right? And they would have like a couple <laughs> of singers come on and, you know, perform. But then in between the performances, there'd be the countdown of the top 40 songs of the week. And the dancers would do like a two, three minute dance to each song. Dude, it's so corny, but I'm just telling you. Know, that would have been fun I'm to do. Dancer, and that to me was the end all. I thought I was going to dance for Janet Jackson. I mean, that's what I that's, wanted. Hey, to that's do. a dream. It's okay. It's okay. And and you you're here. You never I'm know. Sorry. You might still be able to dance for Janet Jackson if you see her in the streets. You'd be like Janet. Look at this control. Oh, he oh heck yeah! I would just bust it out with her. <laughs> oh, oh hold on, girl. In fact, right before COVID, I think it was the. <laughs> I went to Janet's concert up in San Francisco. Oh, did you? In the park, yeah. She's still doing, yeah, she's still, she's still hitting it, huh? She had just had her baby, I think, not too long ago. She looked amazing. It was same Janet, same Janet. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, all right, that is amazing. Uh -huh. Yes, that's funny. So she tried to steal my hat. This, this, this girl tried, to, she said, give me that hat. And then yeah. I had to keep my hat with me just in case she tried to take it off my head and run. Yeah. You know, but yeah, so I like my hats so like you, so. Hard. <laughs> that is amazing. So I, de I definitely appreciate having you. Thank you so much for gracing the mic and the screen and Aww. for, uh, you know, and, and for making it through technical difficulties. But that's what that's what it's all about. That's what it's all I, about. I'm empowered now. If I can figure out how to download your sweetheart, <laughs> I, I can wrestle an alligator. You can wrestle an alligator. And you know what? I'll be there with you. I have your back on that alligator. I hold his tail so he won't spend too much. Yeah, I feel like I'd be good. You'd be good. You'd be good. Thank you so much, Thank the you. holistic Thank you so coach. Much. Thank you for coming. Bless you. Thank you so much. Bye. Have a good one. Bye.